we got to break that. Like, mom, you, you got to, when you, when you grab a pistol or anything, boom, this is where your finger should always be at all times. Away, f- even if it's like more down here, this is still kind of dangerous. Or like resting on the trigger guard, like at the fucking most, or or, or at the least, or whatever the fuck you say. But never here, right? Never, especially on the trigger. You're always right here. First max was the turnout of my lifestyle. Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies. Conversating with the gods by my wildflower to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Walk through the sands of times like Gara on the other side. Side of that gat is karma, he wet Prada, the devil like inside your box now while the angels fly over my head. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. We are back with another episode of the God's Hour podcast with your boy Big Sabavelli. Back in the place to be, La Merca Superior Palace 81 Studios. We are live in effect, live and direct. It's your boy, Mr. Nine Times. Yes. Over the weekend, it was kind of busy, you know, busier and shit, because we got a couple of things we're going to cover. Friday, we went to the shooting range, and I already knew, I already knew, I told my pop, I was like, there's going to be a lot of people. Now, I didn't anticipate that Friday was indeed Veterans Day, so shout out to all our veterans out there who have served on behalf of our country, who have laid down their lives on who laid their lives on the line who sacrificed made the ultimate sacrifice to do what they thought or what what i believe also is right you know what i mean some people i don't know i'm not going to speak for some people but for the majority of everybody that served and shit and did a great job i commend all y'all salute y'all you know what i mean i appreciate everybody especially my both my grandfathers my grand my papa nacho he was in the military i I don't i don't know the logistics of the shit but he was in some branch of the military for at least a year or something like that in mexico my grandpa my um abuelito lupe he served in world war ii you guys already know i covered that numerous times um i ha- i've had you know um my cousin shannon rest in peace she passed away doing some sort of military training exercise which kind of like uh, is a bummer, you know. Um, I don't know the whole what happened. Oh, oh well, basically what happened was she was doing like the. <clears throat> what do you What do you do when you're on the things that you jump off a cliff and you have like those wings or whatever? Uh, para- is it parasailing or I don't, I don't know what it's called. But she was in one of those things where you hold on and you like fly, and. I guess they were doing that. They were jumping off a cliff doing that and, and hitting the water. But I guess the the whatever contraption she had on it, like it drowned her or whatever. So so rest so rest in peace, Shannon. I always when I always give my like for Dia de los Muertos and all my family members. I tr- I try to always um, honor the ones that were closest to me because we have such a big family and I didn't I was I didn't know everybody all that well but basically it's always Ian Raul Josh those were my closest friends growing up Jaime my cousin uh my both my grandfathers Roxy my baby cousin who passed away which is weird like she passed away probably like um like it was a month uh, of Jaime, Jaime and Roxy were like a month apart, and then I know my, uh, my tia Gabby. I think she lost either her father, or I, I don't know what who who it was, but like she she was the one where I was like, they say death comes in threes and all that bullshit. I I don't I don't subscribe into that that whole because you know Mexicans we have our own like superstition and all that. Everyone does, but you know I don't I don't subscribe to death comes in threes because. It just happens, you know. Sometimes that's the way that the dice rolls. R- Raul and Ian, I think Ian passed away in March and Raul passed away in August. So that's whatever, five months. 
But I don't, I don't, I don't look at things that way. In that, oh well, they come in threes or whatever. You know, it's just it happens. It happens. So for, going back to the veterans and shit like that. Well, actually, yeah. So okay, so Shannon. Yeah, I wasn't close to her. She was more so like kind of like a third cousin. So she would be like my cousin's cousin's cousin. So I don't know how you divvy that up, but um I wasn't close to her. I I, I think I've seen I think I saw her like once or twice at the family parties. But like I said, our family's just so fucking big that when it comes to remembering all the people that are no longer here with us, it's crazy. Like my tío Ricardo, I think he's he um he stayed out there with his family in Texas, so it was pretty much. I didn't know him. I never. I don't think I've ever really met him. I think he was more. I think he was my dad's tío, so he would be like my grand uncle. Um. So he passed. So he was young. I think. I think he was young. I think he was probably like maybe ten years older than my dad or something like that. So salute to everybody that uh, was in the service. Um. I have homies that have been in the service. I uh I just admire the fact that anytime someone goes out and fights for your freedom, I I whether you know you wanted to or not, whether you got drafted, whether you did it, whether you have ulterior mo- motives like the the square root of all that was you sacrificing yourself for your country and I think that's really dope. You know, um for the longest time, I had a, a real resentment towards America for whatever fucking... I just had resentment, you know what I mean, towards anything and everything. Uh, I had a lot of anger as a kid, you know, but, like, just growing up in... in like, whenever, whenever we would have, like, the flag, I would never stand up for the flag. I never cared. I, I was just, like... I don't know. I, I was always selfish in that way where I, I knew... I felt like I was hurting, so I... I didn't care for the hurt of others because I was hurting. So I think that's where it really came down to. It was me kind of like soaking in my trauma and not really trying to give any sort of credit to anyone else's trauma. I guess that's how I, I boiled it down in my head. But, you know, just looking back, I don't, I don't, you know, I never regret nothing, but it's just more so like now I understand as a man, I'm like, oh, like grandpa. He, especially my Olito Lupe, he served in World War II. Like, there wasn't that many Mexicans that went out there on behalf of the U.S. to fight. I don't know if Mexico, I don't know historically. I mean, maybe on paper they'll say, yeah, Mexico was united with the U.S. or they were our allies. But to be honest, bro, like, Mexico wasn't really in it the way the U.S. was or, or like, the allied powers and all that. It was just a whole different thing. And Like, you got to think in Mexico at the time in the 40s, we're just probably getting off of of the revolution. We're just getting off of like Zapata, Pancho Villa. So the country didn't have like no, couldn't afford a war with anybody. Like we're still trying to get our situation handled over here. So it's interesting when you look historically throughout like the countries where they are during these events, especially during World War One. Mexico had no dog and no fight because that was during like. Probably, either, I want to say it's either in the beginning of the revolution or like in the heat of it. But there was no way Mexico was gonna fight on nobody's behalf for no fucking reason. We had our own dogs to fight on that shit in the first world war. World War Two was kind of like you got to think, bro. World War One and World War Two were like twenty years apart, right? Twenty or thirty, more like thirty years apart. But imagine how crazy that is that. World War One, Mexico is in a, in a revolution. World War Two, Mexico is coming out of it, and right after World War Two is pretty much when we had the Cold War and all that, which is like the Bay of Pigs, and and all of that, which is a lot was going on in Mexico as far as the 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 poverty and all that, which made way to the cartels and all that. And I feel like if it would ever come to a world, world war, I feel like Mexico still wouldn't be on anybody's side unless it really has shit to do with Mexico. You know, like if it threatened Mexico's economy and all that, then I really see the Mexican people rising up, especially the cartels. That's the scare. That's the crazy part, which is the scary thing is, is the cartels have so much power in Mexico 
that if a war were to ever pop off with Mexico, with anybody, you just name anybody. I'm not I'm not going to name anybody, but just pick somebody. The, the cartel, like everyone would go to the cartels and kind of like take up arms with the cartels to defend Mexico. It wouldn't be. You know what I mean? I mean, realistically, Mexico is kind of in its own kind of civil war in the sense that the cartels are fighting each other and the people are in the middle between. So the gov- the cartels are fighting each other. The government is doing business with the cartels and the people are in the middle like, well, what the fuck are we like? What is there to even do? Like no one even has the, the money enough something like a like 99 percent of the people have have no no like economical power firepower like really no power at all to defend themselves really it's just the the people that are striving and and thriving and surviving without the cartels are the ones that are like out the way indigenous peoples and tribes that are in remote locations where the cartel either it's like the the cartel has no business being there or it's just like it's out the way. So yeah, it's just really interesting when you look at the just the whole what what what's going on in Mexico. That's why I've, I always like I'm passionate about my country and I always you know, I mean, it's kind of not really my country, but it's like the mother the motherland, you know what I mean? I'm really passionate about that because I I never forget it every day. It's a, it's a daily thing. I never you know, my mom you know, I got to hear that Spanish shit every day, which is an, a whole nother topic. The fact that Mexicanos are still speaking Spanish, which is like the colonizers language. And we forgot all our other, you know, like my grandma, she's one of the last surviving Yaqui Indians that their land isn't even there anymore because it got flooded. And then she forgot her language. So it's just Spanish. Um, and, and, it, and it is funny because I don't even think Spanish is the, the language of the country. I think it's still Nahuatl, right? What's, hold on. Let me look this up. I think I saw that. What's that show where they, they get the Mexican mom and dads to eat food and all that? Um, national language of Mexico is Spanish. It is Spanish. It's Spanish or what? Cas- Castellan? Hold on. Wait, what's the difference between Castellano and Spanish? Is that true? Okay, maybe. No, that probably is right. Because I don't. You would never hear nobody. You never go get tacos. You never order tacos in Nahuatl or, what, or Maya or whatever. You know what I mean? Let me look. Let me look uh Spanish versus Castellano. Castellano. The Spanish language is called Castellano, which refers to the, the Castile province in central Spain where the language has its origins. However, in Latin American countries, the Spanish language is, is called Espanol, and each country of the region has its own colloquial expression and expressions and accents. Well, yeah, you look at Puerto Ricans, they they speak their own shit, Dominican. Dominican, I noticed Puerto Rican and Dominican Spanish is kind of really similar. A coño and, you know, you were puta. No, wait, that's more Colombian. But yeah, everyone has their own dialects and shit like that. Man, I was really hoping that Spanish wasn't the primary language of Mexico, but it is. Um, it's not surprising. So shout out to all the veterans out there that really put, that just really holding it down. Um, I, I, I was talking about this with the homie. Shout out to the homie Angel. I told him I have mad respect for all our our veterans, our people in the service out there because I wouldn't do it. I'm an artist, you know. You're you're going, you're literally going. They're literally going out there for me because I'm not gonna do that shit. <clears throat> I'm fucking fat, you know. My eyes are all fucked up. The, all you know because to be in the military and all that, you don't just say, "Oh, I want to be, I want to go, I want a gun." Like, no, it's like. There's tests and all that, and if you're lucky enough to pass and they accept you, mo- the majority of the people are going to be in uh, the Marines or the Rangers, right? Like, what's the um, the most basic level of the military? Most basic level of the military. Private is the lowest rank, well, obviously, but... 
Um, is it the army? Is it the U.S. Army? I don't know. Okay, so whatever. Let's just say it, it is the army, right? I would be in the army. Like, I don't have no mathematical i mean i'm really good in english but what the fuck is that gonna do like you know that uh, i'm not really i'm not going with my hands i don't know no fucking skills i'm an artist you know what i mean i know how to write songs and that really gets you nowhere in the art like the only the only place i see myself in the army is like a fucking uh like a ad like in ads or sales or fucking making good slogans like army strong or or this only the strong survive or semper fi like i could see myself making up shit like that but let's be let's be real they're not gonna fucking they're not gonna find you a spot there they're gonna slide me with the rest of the fucking burros out there to to put to put my life on the line which i'm not gonna do you know i said it before i don't know if i said it but when the thing that's going down uh between israel and palestine and all that uh, I'm not going to go if they draft me. Like, they're going to have to come and find me. I'm going to do time. And I'm going to be in the pinta slinging beans and shit like that. If if that's if that's what it's going to have to come to. Because I'm just not... I already... Yeah, I think I said that where I said, you know, I, I went back to reference Candace Owens. Where she said, you know, we need to take care of our own country first and all that shit. Granted, Candace Owens has some crazy opinions. So I don't want anyone thinking I'm, I'm pro Candace, whatever her name is, Owens or whatever. I was just more so agreeing with her opinion that... We need to wipe our own ass before we go out and wipe everybody else's ass. And when it when it comes to my views and shit like that, sometimes I'm being like halfway serious, but then not really. You know what I mean? Because I don't want nobody thinking like I'm trying to start a riot or like, you know, I'm just stating my opinions. You know, I don't want anyone feeling like I'm trying to offend anybody or, or things of that nature. You know, I, I really want this to be a show. I don't want this to be CNN. I don't want, you know, because people have taken some of the shit I see on my podcast, like really like to heart, like really seriously. And I'm not trying to invalidate your feelings, but I'm not go. I'm not go, I'm trying to go on my podcast and say, fuck you or whatever. It's just more so I'm trying to give my opinion. And then if it offends you, you could talk to me. You know what I mean? But when you try to like make it a big fucking deal, that's, that's when it becomes coiny to me. Like, it's not that serious, bro. You know, I I get that my fucking podcast is gonna live on forever, and you you yo when you said this on episode three, you said it. You can't take it away. Like no shit, I can't take it away. But but Osiris K, I'm human, and every day I'm learning, and I'm I'm fucking learning new things, and I got this fucking stand all over the fucking place. Like I'm kicking this shit, but I'm learning new things. I'm a human man. Like I'm growing as a person every day, and you can't you can't. That's my biggest thing is like don't judge nobody off of what you what you said like what you thought in a split second because bro like i'm not i'm not one of these ignorant motherfuckers to where it's like oh i'm um this is the way i think and that's that like no bro i i like i i, I love to be um taught I, I love i love um i'm definitely a student of life i love learning new things and if I'm wrong, you call me out on it, you know? Uh, don't be an asshole about it, though, because if it, like, with me, it's like, if you're going to be an asshole about shit, that's when we kind of have to, like, part ways, because I'm not going to let no one disrespect me, especially over an opinion. Like, bro, it's not that serious, bro. You know, if you if, if you really want to get that mad about uh, whatever I have to say on my show, then don't watch my show and block me or whatever the fuck. Like, do what you got to do, but I'm not going to stop the show. I'm not going to I'm not gonna stop making music. I'm not going to stop the God's Hour because you, like, one person, two, three, four, like, it, like who, it could be a mob of people. I don't care because this is something that I made for myself. I don't care if one person doesn't like it i don't care if one person likes it it's just this shit is for me this is for me to inform and 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 get this shit out of my system because i have a lot to talk about and i don't have a lot of people to talk about it with you know what i mean i don't have homies like that i don't have friends so really this podcast is for me and if you like it if people and that that's that's what i'm noticing as i'm branching out as i'm bringing people on as i'm giving a people people a platform to speak and i gave you know abe abe the freak mc rules uh my they're my most successful podcast episodes in my opinion i think it's awesome you know what i mean and and now i'm understanding my responsibility as 
a podcaster, uh, I said this with Two Souls on Fire, where it was like, I kind of got, it was getting, the reason why, a big part of, of why I made this, besides that I needed some sort of like therapeutic outlet, as I do with my music or my paintings, it was like nobody was giving me a platform to talk. You know, Advis, he gave me my first interview. Shout out to Advis out there. And I know some of the shit I told him I never spoke about. Uh, I can't remember off the top of the head, but he gave me my first interview. And I'm proud to say that I wouldn't have done that with anybody else. And looking back when I was trying to get on other podcasts and other platforms to give them uh, my first interview and all that, they weren't appreciative. They were like, who the fuck are you? You know what I mean? And, and I understand that. You look at my... Because uh, today in society, especially on social media with the all people and their fucking bullshit metric systems, they're looking at, okay, how many followers does he have? Does he have 20,000 followers and I only have a thousand great so I could get all that traffic coming into my podcast. This is what people really think in their minds is going to get them successful is like fucking numbers on a website or whatever on Instagram. They think all that shit is going to be theirs. And to me, I don't, bro, I didn't give Abe the Freak and MC Rules their interviews because I thought, yo, they got a thousand, bro, they have a thousand views damn bro i by the time we're done with the with our interviews we're, i'm gonna get a thousand followers and all that no and you know how many followers i got off of uh both of those interviews that are my most successful podcast i got like the, around like you know over 500 plays on instagram like a thousand view of uh, plays on instagram which might not seem like shit compared to like a lot of y'all uh i seen looney out there shout out the homie looney he had like a hundred thousand plays on like one of his instagram reels and i'm like good for looney that's what's up i'm not looking at the numbers like that i got like five followers you know in a month from instagram i've gotten mo i gotten like i want to say in like what is it a year and a half of, of me just going out there and putting myself out there, doing shows and connecting with and networking with other artists. I got like 200 followers. You know, I'd rather I'd rather if I really if this was like a followers game, I'd really be engaged with Instagram and, and, and do the whole, you know, spamming other people that follow me like, yo, if you could like and post and repost my shit and all that. And I'm not trying to shit on nobody that, that does that, but I'm just saying that's not me. I'm not going to go out there like a fucking, you know, like I'm a, I'm an artist, bro. I'm not a fucking social media metrics guy. I'm not a social media butterfly. I make content and I put it out there. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't bro. Like unfollow me. If you don't like it, unfollow me. Get the fuck out of here respectfully though you know what i mean like not a shit on nobody but it's life is too short for you to uh, incorporate yourself with bullshit you get you get what i mean going back to the homie angel he he uh he stippled grip is that he he stippled my frame on my glock 19 look at how beautiful this is i wish i had brought my glock 17 so i could show you what it looked like before but basically, if you look at the grip, he melted down the grips. He he put the the grip on the side on both sides here, and he also like um he carved out like a little piece of the trigger guard on the outside of the trigger guard. And this is awesome, bro. Like I think this is one of the best. Um this is unloaded just so everyone knows, just, you know. You know, see no shells. If this was loaded, shell would have came out. It's, all, it's unloaded. There's nothing in here. Um, yeah, I don't want people thinking because you know I have I have some of my guns around in the podcast, but I hope nobody knows that they're loaded and shit. I probably should. I mean, I do have my magazines right here. If I wanted this, if I wanted one in the chamber, you know what I mean. But these are Sig hollow points. Shout out to Sig, bro. Um, you know, I can easily load it and fucking get rocking and rolling. But, you know, I want to do the podcast. And if we get robbed, I have my shit right here with me. It doesn't even fucking matter. But I really noticed, like, with the with the with the SIG, with the SIG, what the fuck am I saying? With the with the with the stipple grip. That's what I meant to say. It really keeps your hands. And it's like I got the um, what do you call it? Like the hardcore texture, the aggressive texture on the on the grip. I know he has something else. Um, 
I know he has a, another grip that I want to try uh, maybe on my 17. I'm really debating because I have the OD Green 17. And I'm debating if I want to stipple that or just keep it original. But I really like this Glock 19. Um, I took it out to the range on Friday uh, for the first time. Um, with the stipple grip and it's awesome shout out to angel aka the servant on instagram if you want to get any of your glocks if you're around the local ie area and you want to get uh work done on on your glocks or i think it's pretty much exclusively to glock because i think the homie angel told me that if you do it on a i think he said a springfield xd the frame cracks and uh that's no good because if your frame cracks, I think you're going to have to end up getting a new frame. And then I already know it's a fucking bitch and a half to do that. So shout out to fucking bullshit. Uh, shout out to Angel. Really good homie. Um, and, you know, with with uh, with firearms, it's definitely like a big investment. You know, it's like buying a gun is a car payment. Getting work done on it is like half a car payment somewhere around there. I want a new slide. Uh, either I, I either I'm debating on because this is a Glock like I'm gonna really invest in. This is gonna be my main home defense. Uh, shout out to all my my Glock economic Glock economical family out there. You know I really love it. I want to get the slides cut, um, put optics on it, put a light on it. I'm just. Uh, I'm just tight on money, you know, I want to save up, you know, not I don't I don't I really can't afford to to fucking suit it up right now, but in in time, you know what I mean? In time I'm going to get it real nice and uh nice and proper for your boy, you know what I mean? Um the way I feel about people with like their souped up guns and all that shit, but they can't shoot for shit, it's kind of like eh, I don't know. You seem like a hipster. You seem like you just want to you want to uh, people to look at you and be like, wow, you know, th that that's the thing I see is like a lot of like some people, especially with the younger kids too, the younger generation, they'll have, you know, a red dot, a lie, you know, they'll, it'll be hooked up. They'll have a fucking uh, uh, a hundred round drum on their glocks. Like you could tell it's totally illegal to have. They'll have switches and all that. And it's like, bro, that's corny. Let's bring back legal hammers. Let's bring back, like, it's cool to own it legally. You hear all these raps about these rappers having Tech Nines and Uzis and all that. Like, that you, that's like serious time, bro. I, I love Mob Deep. Havoc, you know, he, talk, he talked about, I'd rather get, I'd rather, what did he say? He said something like, Havoc said something on, I want to say either Murder Music or Infamous, where he said something like, I'd rather. I'd rather do time than be dead or something like that, which is the bottom line in like, you know, uh, um, home defense. But like when you're in the streets wilding like that and, you know, you're selling drugs and you're, oh shit, my phone almost fell. When you're doing like crime and shit like that, you kind of throw all that out the window. You know, if you're selling crack and you need to have a gun on you that can't be traced to you and, you know, it's not probably the smartest idea. So I'm advocating for all my peoples to get, uh, you know, get some training, get your fire safety course card, get yourself a, a, a good firearm. Don't just buy whatever you think you saw on Call of Duty that you think would be cool. Like ask around, tell people about like your interests and all that and actually test test your weapons out you know we go to the range either every other week or something like that or at least twice a month whenever we can and i love it it's not something it's not really a, a hobby to me it's more so i don't know i told y'all like it's like painting or something like i'm super into it you know what i mean it, it definitely tires my tires me out though mentally physically you know every time we spend two three hours at the range i'm exhausted you know, you I'm because I'm putting all that focus down range and I'm trying to do my best to hit my targets. I'm not out there just, ho, 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 just boo, 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 like just shooting for the fuck of it. Like I'm really trying to hone in and do my best, you know, As, with anything. You should always do your best, you know, in moderation. I always try to I always love having fun, especially with the, the mini 14 that we have. It's an awesome rifle. 
and that's what I love doing. Y'all know, y'all already know the program. I talk about guns. This is the, this is damn near the God's Gun Hour podcast at this point. But what are you gonna do? You know, if you don't like it, switch the channel, homie. Go watch the fucking the Bitch Hour podcast. So sticking on guns, I'm not gonna talk about th- what what happened at the range with that asshole. Uh, maybe I should. So there was this guy being like a little overzealous, the range master. We were at the steel gallery and he was just like, he was on it. He, rem- he to me, he kind of seemed like if he had some sort of like, I feel like all the people, especially the males, they have some sort of the range masters have some sort of military background because they have like the, all of them have like this, like, or maybe actually only two of them, the, the steel gallery guy and this other older guy, they have like this authoritative, like almost like drill sergeant esque. I noticed there's like two archetypes that I found uh of veterans. There's like the quiet ones that I mean I guess everybody's either introverted or extroverted, but you know the more vocal ones, like the guy who asked me, you know, are your sides zoned in? And I got all like, you know, all fucking I didn't know what he was talking about. And he was like, Are your sides zoned in? All right, we're gonna put you here, here and he was just like boom, boom, boom you know, versus the other homie, he served in Afghanistan, he's just quiet, and he's chill, and if you didn't really know him, you probably didn't think he had any sort of uh, military background, but I guess that's everybody, you're either introverted, extroverted, yada, 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 so anyway, we're at the range, and this guy was just kind of like, uh, my dad thought he was like, really like, taking his job too seriously, but in my opinion, if I'm trying to keep the range safe, You kind of have to be on the ball because at any split moment, boom, like it happens. You know, you catch a ricochet to the face. That's why everyone's supposed to wear safety glasses. It's like, you know, um, I got hit with shrapnel on my cheek from this dude who was shooting like, I want to say six, seven, eight, you know, 10 feet away from me. He was shooting and I already knew he shot something at an angle and I felt a ricochet hit uh, a piece of a metal hit my cheek and it it fucking hurt. I didn't get cut open or anything, but I'm like, fuck, if it hit me in the eye, I would have, you know, there goes your eye, you know? So the guy was just kind of laying down the law of the land and I got it on film where this guy, he's going down the line and he's looking at us. And granted, I, I have a really good uh, range etiquette, you know, finger off the trigger, keeping the, the my my weapon in the safe direction, uh, my weapon, my fucking firearm in the safe direction. Um, you know, a weapon is more like if you're going to hurt somebody. Uh, you know, just I have a really good uh, uh, range etiquette, good range manners. But my mom, you know, she's new to this whole thing. As soon as she picks a I swear to God, she picks a gun up and she already has, like she picks a gun up like that. And that scares me. And what's crazy is I told my dad, I told my pop, I was like, we got to get mom to, we got to break that. Like, mom, you, you got to, when you, when you grab a pistol or anything, boom, this is where your finger should always be at all times away. F- Even if it's like more down here, this is still kind of dangerous or like resting on the trigger guard, like at the fucking most or, or, or at the least or whatever the fuck you say, but never here, Right. Never, especially on the trigger, you're always right here. And because the guy told her, he was like, this is when when your finger's in the trigger card, there's too much of a chance of a negligent discharge. If you don't know what a negligent discharge is, it's when you, when the gun fires without you intending it to. And granted, in the moment, I'm like, dog, we're already, she's already, she's already, she has her finger pointed, yeah, but it's already downrange. But what he said was when you're not on target, still a negligent discharge that's a fucking i hate that fucking negligent like whatever fuck that word but i got where he was coming from but you could see my dad's face and it's crazy because i caught it on camera i had the camera here i'm loading the the daniel defense loading the ar i have no i'm I'm not even looking at this dude i'm in my own world i don't give a fuck about nobody else i'm here the you know range master he's got you know range master dick he's over here he's got the shit under control we're good. I don't give a fuck. So I'm loading the thing and I notice, you know, he's talking in the background, big whoop, right? But then he tells, 
He's like, finger off the trigger or whatever. He tells my mom, too much of a, le- a negligent discharge. And as he's walking away, my dad goes, he goes, yeah, all right. And, and let me take off my glasses so you could you could see with my eyes. There's my eyes. You could. So as he's walking away, my dad, I look at my dad. He looks at me and he goes. <laughs> it, was just so, it was just so funny to be like, I love my pops. He's he cracks me up, my, my dad. So, yeah, the the range was fun, even though Range Master Dick was taking a shit. I mean, to be real, though, I mean, that's his job, bro. Like, you, if you get paid to do something, like, do it. You know what I mean? Don't be out here half-assing it, like, just sitting back eating sunflower seeds. Like, oh, well, yeah, the, yeah, go ahead. Like, no, bro, I, I, I appreciate that because if someone is doing, like, unsafe acts that you feel like you need to check, then go for it. You know what I mean? You're You're literally the one responsible for all of us because if something happens they're, they're gonna look at that guy and be like okay well where were you at for like when did when this when this shit popped off what were you doing and then you know so it goes from there um what was so funny is uh last night shout out to abe the freak and, and don jesse they had like this little narco party and it's it's so funny because the first thing i see is they have a bunch of guns on the table. They have something that looks like a Mossberg, uh, a Smith and Wesson. They have just a, a few guns on the table, and I'm like, wow, this fool brought his uncle that probably has a cartel money, and they have guns. Like that's cool, man. Like, I, well, like what? But the odd thing was, is they're at somebody's house. They're not at a range. They're not somewhere in the mountains. They're in a backyard, so that was kind of like flag number one, where I was like, okay, like, what the fuck is going on here? Are, are they selling these things? Like, what's 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 really going on here? And then I see, like, a bunch of money, what looks like a gold brick, and, like, they have one of those, you know when you stand in the middle and the camera spins around and it gives you, like, a 360 film and they're all like, Woo, and the camera's spinning and they're all doing their stupid ass little photo ops or whatever so i'm looking and the homie abe he has the cuete on a ho- on on the holster in his belt and right away i was like this is a party there's like a photo booth there's guns on the table what looks like money and a gold brick i i hit up abe i was like uh are those fake and then I hit him up again, and he was like, he 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 tells me, yeah, these are all real. These are all, I think he said these are all mine or these are all real or something like that. And I'm like, okay, what pistol is that? And it took him, if that were me, like, okay, if I have this on my hip, it don't take me 10 minutes. It don't take me 20 minutes to tell you what this is. So, I, yo, sirs, what is that? This is a Glock 19 Gen 3. It's not loaded. You know, very simple. Five seconds. Why did it take you 20 minutes to answer me? He he hits me back, HK P2000, 40 cal. And I I just started laughing because I wanted to tell him, Abe, I know what an HK P2000 is. You didn't have to tell me it's a 40 caliber. I love when people t- I love when people say that this is, this is a Glock this is a Glock 19 Gen 3 9 by 19 Parabellum you know fucking you know whatever fucking optic night sights stipple grip like you didn't you didn't have to mention everything bro I I get it like people just say that because they want to impress you on their dumb fuck gun knowledge or whatever it is you know I like I don't I mean I I get it you know some people are a little overzealous about what the fuck they they have. Or like me, when I got my first Bursa, I was so gung-ho about the Bursa. I would tell people I have my Bursa Firestorm 380 rubber grips and all that shit. And people would be like, oh, wow. Like, that's really all it's for is for you to run down the whole shit to, like, make people think, oh, this fool is a fucking mega mega splinter cell dick, you know. The, the, the way I feel about it is just I think it's like, wow, we're there. As a society, we're... We're there already where we have those parties. Like, you know, I had a Star Wars party growing up. People have SpongeBob. People have the amazing world of Gumball. Shout out to all those TV shows. But now we're in the era of where we have like fake narco parties and all that. And 
it's crazy. I think I thought that was comical. I thought it was funny, but guns at a party, even fake ones, that shit gives me like halfway's anxiety. Like I would be there checking every gun, like you know, making sure it's loaded, and especially how what the number one, the number one um thing that gave it away that it was fake. It was everybody was taking photos with their finger on the trigger. Let me see. This is clear. Just because you never know. You got to do it every time. You point, you, you you know. Everyone had their finger on the trigger. And just like. Like, you, first of all, that's so fucking silly to fucking be in those James Bond. Like, all fucking, all stupid. Like, I love my gun of death, but I ain't going to be posing. Like, you see me when I did the the... What is it? The the photo app I did for Green Light Three. Granted, that's for an album. Like people, I mean, I get it. I'm not gonna take the shit. I almost point. I almost flag flag the fuck out of myself right now. Which is another thing. You never point a gun at yourself or anybody else. Um, my dog is snoring. I think it's awesome. We'll get to him in a second. But the, the whole guns at the party thing. That's how I knew they were fake because they have their finger on the trigger. And I'm like, okay, either this, these are real and someone's going to get shot because this is poor fucking gun etiquette all around, or these are fake as fuck, which I think they are. He didn't hit me back. Abe, you got to hit me back, by the way, because we got to do a podcast with somebody else tomorrow. But uh, by the time he sees this, it's going to be way, way after. Um, so who knows? Maybe it's a mystery. Maybe it happened. Maybe it didn't. Maybe you're in the fucking back to the future right now, not even knowing what's going on anyway fucking yeah so the guns at the party kind of scared me rappers using other people's guns which is i can't believe i spent this long i I literally had other shit to talk about but maybe i'll do another podcast tomorrow yeah because we're already running we'll talk about presley on the next one how about that how about that boy we'll talk about you tomorrow we'll have to do another one make this like a part two so rappers using other people's guns i don't i don't like it i don't respect it i feel like the way the way i look at it is i'm a responsible gun owner so you should be too i get it you're trying to look cool i get your homie has a fucking rifle as big as arkansas with a fucking a crazy drum mag that holds a thousand rounds i get it you know for aesthetically i get it that's the problem with people people are are all in aesthetics people don't care about how their music sounds people care about how it actually looks do they have the right image do they have the right hats do they have the right sunglasses do the, does their album cover make it look like it's going to sell a million dollars i don't give a fuck about any of that shit I've always hated aesthetics over like the art form. Like this should this shouldn't be about oh does it look cool? It should be does it sound good? Does it sound cool? Because if it don't sound good, fuck it, fuck this album. There's been so many albums out there. You could have swore up and down the cover is crazy. It has crazy you know art by Danny did it or fucking whoever did. The, don't get scared now crazy fucking album covers you listen to the album and it's trash trash as fuck dude you know i have more respect for artists that have like danny brown like atrocity exhibition i didn't really like that album but that album cover is crazy and what that album cover says to me is this is not hip-hop this is like experimental music which it is you listen to it and it's some other shit i appreciate that just be straight up with me Rappers using other people's guns, I think, is corny, bottom line. Get your FSC, get yourself a license to carry or whatever it is, and just do it like that. You know, why fake the funk? Why even try to perpetrate like that shit is yours, you know what I mean? Just bottom line, just buy your own shit, you know what I mean? Well, why why look the part when, when, you, can, when you can be the part, you know? I own this. I'm I'm a proud gun owner. I have my 17. I'm a proud owner. Burst of, my burst of firestorm. I kind of don't like it because the beaver tail. If you don't know what the beaver tail, it like kind of, you know, it it kind of gives it like this curve. When I was shooting it, it was it was digging way the fuck into my hand and it it was hurting me. So maybe it's for people with smaller hands. I don't know if it's just my grip. I'm gonna shoot it more to see if like I'm gonna end up selling it or just keeping it so I can 
you know, maybe the value goes up over time and I'll have like an antique type shit. But for now, whatever. Message of the day is don't fake the funk. You know, people see right through that. Um, I do. Uh, I'm more like uh, intuitively inclined to like read people and shit like that and know not to like fuck with certain people. But just don't be fake, bro. You know, whatever it is. You know, people love saying that, but it's true, bro. Like, just live, like, live in your truth. Live in, live in, in, in the present moment. Don't be trying to fucking, po- like, post this image or try to get people fucked up on, a, like, how you really are. Like, because in real life, like, I, I at least see through it. And it's funny because you see other artists, they try to get on by being fake with other fake people because they think their fakeness will fucking, they'll fake, they'll fake it till they make it type shit. And it happens, yeah, for like one out of two two fucking million rappers, yeah, but for the majority, it's actually your talent, and you as a real person is going to get you further than you being fake. This is the God's Hour! Max, Max, what's the turn out of my lifestyle? Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies Conversating with the gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never-ending saga Gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never-ending saga Gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never-ending saga Gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never-ending saga Walk through the sands of times like Gara On the other Side of that gat is karma, you wet prada, the devil like inside your box now while the angels fly over my headstone.